What's up everyone? Guess where I am? Back in my favourite little testing ground, the quarry road near my house. I'm just doing a very quick follow-up video to my DJI Osmo Pocket video that I did a little while ago. Some questions were raised in the comments about the ability of the Osmo Pocket when attached to the bike and how well the, not so much the stabilisation, but the autofocus works. And having done a bit of research, there are a lot of questions, complaints, queries and concerns about autofocus, particularly when you have a moving subject, or, or actually, in this case, what it's fixed to will be moving quite rapidly. I also had concerns over the ability to stabilise footage with very small vibrations, the kind that you get when the Osmo is attached directly to the bike through this, if I just bring it down here, through this bike mount. Um, what I have done is I've, where I was previously mounting to the underneath of my bike computer, I've changed it to this stem mount purely because I'd like to be able to see the screen for this test that I'm about to do. I'm going to change a few settings, test it out on different road surfaces with as many different settings as I can. I did a ride to the train station to go to London on Friday and the results were absolutely shocking, which I will put on screen now. And the settings for that were 1080p, 24 frames per second, and with the camera set on follow. So I'm gonna try this first one, which I actually think could be the best solution for it, with tilt lock set on 4K at 60 frames per second. And I'm gonna try, by being able to see the screen, once I've set the position of the camera, I think I can lock focus by, by touching on the screen kind of like you do with a, a mobile phone app to, to lock the focus and lock the exposure. So I'll give that a go first. This is a relatively smooth road, but there is a slight, there is a, still a sort of small sharp vibration. And uh, so let's jump straight into it now, see how that works. And then I'll head off to a slightly bumpier road and test it there as well. So this is at 4K, 60 frames per second, tilt lock. And I've tried to, fix the focus I'm not sure it actually did anything but I basically sort of tapped the screen on the area I wanted to focus ideally we would have a sort of infinity focus on this camera as with the GoPro so that uh... right save me some time as you can see that setting change made no difference at all still got that ridiculous focus pulsing the, sh the footage is completely unusable absolutely horrendous and I went on to ride the best part of an hour, filming and riding, changing every setting I could think of. I had AFC, AFS, I changed the ISOs, I changed from tilt lock, FPV mode, follow mode, manually locking the focus by touching the screen and holding on an area. Nothing made any difference at all. So in my mind, it's that little vibration on the bike that caused most, if not all of those problems. There have been complaints about the contrast autofocus system that DJI use anyway but I'm pretty convinced that wasn't the issue. So I did put that to the test by holding the Osmo in my hand for this next clip. I'm still riding, same roads, same settings, I think. Um, in actual fact, I think I had this on 4K, 50 frames per second, because I was switching back and forth between follow mode. And as you can see, the suspension, the additional suspension from my arm, taking out that vibration makes a huge difference. Have a look at this. So I'm expecting this to be perfectly focused, very smooth, and track my face as I either move my head or move the camera. I think it gets slightly confused by sunglasses and possibly the cap. I'm holding it as I demonstrated in my last video, where I've actually got the mount just slotted between my fingers. And that means I should be able to keep my hands well away from the uh, from the microphones. What I'd like to try, if I can, is clipping it in facing this way. So to see if it will do auto track whilst clipped to the bars. So if I move this down, that's about the position where it's going to be clipped. Let's see if I can successfully do this while I'm riding. 
still got auto track on. There we go, we clipped in. So, don't know what the vibration's like. The light is horrendous, because obviously you're looking straight up at the sky. So there you go. As you can see, working perfectly in my hand. The second I clip it into the bars, the same vibration causes the focus problem. Even when it has a static object to focus on, being my face in this case, just couldn't get it. Pulsing in and out, totally unusable footage. So to wrap up, my main reason for getting the DJI Osmo, it's still absolutely fabulous. In hand, stabilization is brilliant. On the bike, riding with it in hand, brilliant. I love the time lapse and motion lapse functions. The slow motion looks beautiful. 99% um, of it is really good. In fact, no, 99% is too high because this particular function represents more than 1% of what I would like it to do. It just can't be used. I, I'm going to have to stick to my GoPro session to have any kind of onboard footage, which is a real shame because the footage that that gives is not great either but at least it's usable until or unless DJI can come up with some kind of firmware update the the complaints are so huge in numbers that I'm absolutely sure it's right up there in their list of priorities and I really do hope that they're, they're listening and they do something about it because it could it's it's really close to being just the perfect action not not skydiving deep sea diving cliff jumping kind of action but for a cyclist, it's close to being the perfect cycling vlogger's camera. I, I still really like it. I'm not going to be too down on it because mounting it to a bike I don't think was ever one of its main functions. But they do, they are bringing out their own mounts for bikes and for surfboards and things like that. So surely they are expecting it to work well in those conditions. As it currently stands, not only does it not work well, it doesn't work at all. Completely useless. So there you go. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one, weigh up exactly what it is you're using it for. My next test, when I can work out how to do it, is I'm going to mount it to the side of my crash helmet. Because, again, similar to my arm, I think that will just provide that extra little bit of stabilisation just to take out the vibration from the road. And that may well be the solution. Unfortunately, I haven't got a bracket that fits on my, my crash helmet yet, so... I'll have to um, to wait for that, but uh, watch this space for another little video. I don't know how many of these videos I can make about the DJI Osmo Pocket, but there'll be that one if it works. There'll also be another one if DJI do come out with a firmware update. I hope that's been of help and use and interest to some of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you soon.